Sacred. 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 Why? That's my sacred. family. Sacred. A child's toy to a child would be sacred. Life itself. Being a mother. Sacred. <laughs> That's sacred. Something you're devoted to or you think of devotion, you think of reverence, you think of possibly something holy, but something that you hold very, very important to you. Something to do with religion. Often when we hear the word sacred, people naturally think of religion. So we think of sacred buildings as being churches or mosques or a sacred text being the Bible or, or the Quran. But I, I think it's helpful to think about the sacred in a broader way than that. Whatever makes us uh, really happy and joyful and live our lives uh, to the fullest. Also another thing that's sacred is the right to choose what I feel is sacred. Not be told what is sacred by somebody else. And this is sacred to me. It's a wide range of things that people take to be unquestionable moral realities like human rights or patriotism or care for children. Over the past couple of hundred years, we've actually learned to think about our individual selves as having sacred significance. We actually think that we have individual responsibility for carrying our own life stories forward and for remembering our life stories. Um, and so the, the kind of artefacts that we build around that are images, letters, stories. We actually feel a responsibility to keep those close to us. Your own memories are yours, nobody else's. Uh, is what's locked inside you. Is, you know, is the things that you can reflect on wherever and whenever you, you're doing something. It's like a history of me, myself and my family. and It's like our history. The sacred is so obvious to people that we don't become aware of it until it gets threatened. <laughs> also, it's funny that if you turn the word around, it means scared. And uh, sometimes sacred can be quite scary for some people. An experiment was done um, at a Harvard University where people were asked to imagine a scenario in which uh, a train was out of control and they had the choice of not intervening and say 15 passengers on the train dying or intervening in a way that would lead to one person dying. And most people in that situation would say, well, it's a terrible situation, but we would rather act in a way that one person died rather than 15. The experiment then posed them with the alternative scenario of if you had the choice between 15 people dying on that train or you being able to prevent that accident by torturing someone, what would you do? Suddenly people become much, much less comfortable with that idea. There's something about the idea of torture that seems to violate really profoundly our sense of what it is to be human, uh, so that we may even be far more reluctant to imagine torturing someone than, than killing them. I wouldn't kill someone to save sacredness because that would totally defeat the point of sacredness. The sacred is so essential to our idea of what it means to be human that when people commit acts of profane evil, we call them inhuman, inhumane or animals. Selfishness, uh, disregard for others, uh, for the things of this world, uh, you know, trying to grab and uh, keep things for themselves uh, without allowing people to share and enjoy the benefits of this world, the resources of this world for themselves. That is, uh, that's real destruction of for the purpose of life. Sometimes people might wonder, is the sacred and profane, is that really the same as talking about right and wrong? And if you thought about the most intense form of right that you could think of, and the most intense form of wrong that you could think of, we'd be getting close to it. Sacred to me is community. So the opposite to sacred would be somebody who would come in and try and destroy that community be it theft, harming somebody in the extreme murder. And that to me is evil, when somebody chooses to harm community and chooses to harm people within the space. People who breach the sacred, people who are tyrants or terrorists or, or paedophiles, we see them as being beyond the acceptable boundaries of, of moral society. Killing a child, abuse of a child, um, 
I think and that can be quite evil. I also do believe that certain people take pleasure and joy in um, executing that kind of power over individuals and um, I do feel that those are evil. There's something about the sacred and the profane that's so fundamental to our sense of reality that when something that is sacred gets polluted we feel disgusted and this is a more profound sense of wrong than, I don't know, downloading something off the internet that, that sort of breaches copyright or maybe not telling your parents exactly where you've been on a night out. This is a much more fundamental sense of wrong, something that really disgusts or appalls us at a gut level. By recognising what we see as evil, we can begin to see what we really think is sacred. And this matters because the sacred shapes our most powerful ideas and feelings about the way the world should be. This can be good, but sacred causes can also lead people to act in violent or destructive ways. If we really want to understand ourselves and our societies, we need to know what kind of sacred feelings shape our lives, for good and for ill. Sacred.